Welcome to our Connect Next about some of our decom products that we're going to discuss today. Connect Next is a series uh, that we're doing throughout 2021 to bring us closer to you as the customer and our stakeholders out there since we can't see you in person. Uh, and a good way for us to communicate with you on some new products and new developments that we are putting together. This series is going to bring you in our in, into first line and show you from the AMV bus to, to our decon products to cool invest as we go into the summer months. Today I got Corey here with me um, and a lot of folks know Corey from the trainings that we've been doing and some of the R&D that we've been putting together to enhance all of our products, not just the decon products. Today, we're going to specifically talk about the EDS, the Enhanced Decon System that we have put out over the last year with a number of customers around the U.S. And, uh, you know, we're going to discuss a couple points today about why the EDS is going to make, um, you know, first responders and, and the military's lives a lot faster, a lot easier, a lot faster to recover from decon missions that they're put into. So the history of the EDS you know, this came about <clears throat> over a couple months uh, of uh, going back and forth with customers <clears throat> and discussing with them, uh, you know, how we could put together our, our FireTech or Dahlgren Decon product and our SDL, um, you know, the kit. So putting those products together in a quick, expedient manner to get, do a six person, 12 person, 24 person decon, you know, small team. Uh, expeditionary deployment um, in, in environments that are tough to handle. To be and, and you can't set up a large tent, you can't set up a large uh, system, and you still achieve all that what you want to get to with these EDS kits that we put out there. So you know we've had FiberTech since uh, oh, since about two thousand eight. Um, we, we've been deploying it in a multitude of sizes, formats from, from these individual wipes to, to mitts. And now we've created these shuffle pits. Um, we, we've enhanced the mitts that we put out. And uh, then also with the dog and decon product as well in the 22 ounce configuration sprayers. And we'll go a little bit more in depth about the EDS kit in, in, in a couple minutes too. So today we're gonna really go into the history, the EPDS, that, that what, what it was kind of based upon it from the past. And then why? Um, why does this matter to the first responder community and to the warfighter community? So, you know, Corey, if you want to just cover some, some of the items about the EDS, you know, a lot of folks know like the EPDS that's yeah. been out there. Yeah, so the, I mean, you kind of mentioned it. The history of this thing goes back to the U.S. Special Operations community. Um, really in the early 90s, uh, it was this concept called the Expedient Personnel Decon System or the EPDS. And our first line EDS, the Enhanced Decon System, is just the latest iteration of this concept. Um, been around for a while, but the technology kind of lagged behind the concept. And really those two technologies of FiberTech, uh, Dahlgren Decon, and then also for skin use, RSDL, um, finally are at a point where we can combine those technologies, package them up, kit them up, give the operator everything that they need, uh, to be able to really conduct really fast, quick, expedient decon um, in very austere environments with no water, no power, no tents. Uh, it doesn't really need anything. Everything fits in a duffel bag. Um, and then what First Line did is we took it one step further. We, we optimized this kit. Um, we came up with a, an SOP, uh, a set of instructions for how to use this kit. Um, but then we took, looked at our state and local and you know stateside federal agency stakeholders and end users, and um, we adapted that same kit and that same concept to those end users. Uh, and it's really taken off. Uh, it's, it's really just changed the way that people have looked at uh, how they can run their decon, where they can run their decon, um, what sort of logistical footprint that their decon operations have where we can take it from Quite literally, uh, there's there's places out there that are rolling around with trailers and red trucks right. as decontamination trucks, and we can put that same capability into a, a 40 pound duffel bag that can fit in the, in the trunk of a car. Um, so that was really the big focus of, of this optimization, the EDS. <clears throat> and, and one of the one of the key things that we learned from like old systems that were out there in the past 
was they were using outdated technology that you talked about like for decon. And you have like HTH, you know, everybody knows about the super tropical bleach, they would, they would utilize this, but it was very corrosive, right? These kits are made to be out there for years, stored inside of containers or inside of a back, back of a vehicle. And what they would find is over like a period of just like a, maybe even six months to a year, those decon products were leaking or, or corroding other things that were inside of the EPDS. And we, we heard a lot of customer feedback and what, what a lot of folks were doing in the past was they would buy these other systems um, that are out there and they were just taking all this other decon media out and putting in FiberTech, putting in Dahlgren and putting in some RSDL into it. So from that feedback, you know, we, we kind of looked at, why don't we just make a kit ourselves and get it fielded, take it out to Dugway, do some um, Dugway proving grounds and do some trials with the special operation um, you know, folks who, who have been utilizing their EPDS for many years, they know best. Let them beat it up. Let them validate for us, you know, does this system work? Now, we've known from testing that we've done that FiberTech, Dahlgren, and RSDL, in that combination of products, are all compatible. They're all interoperable. They're all compatible. You can't put RSDL with bleach. You can't put RSDL with some other products that are out there just because of you know, side issues might have. But FiberTech, Dahlgren, and RSTL work well together and, and work well as a system. And that, you know, we talk about a system of systems and it's been, it's a family of systems concept that the DOD's been looking at for many years, uh, putting together a kit that would allow them to quickly decontaminate it in a hallway or in an alley or any kind of small, small area they might need to. And uh, from what our, our experience has been, is like where where have we've seen some of the EDS kits deployed. Yeah, so I mean, we we've pushed pushed them out to the end users, and then the great thing is that we get this feedback, and we continue to optimize them. So we've seen people set them up in the basements of buildings inside when it's cold outside. Um, we've seen them set up in uh, the vestibule doorways that a lot of commercial properties have, where they they have two sets of doors. Um, it's almost like a, a little airlock. It's a great warm zone uh, that you can set up your decon line because this is such a small footprint kit. Um, you can set it up. And then, of course, I mean, the the original purpose of this was these austere environments. You know, the, the kit's designed to be thrown out of a Black Hawk helicopter. It's designed to be, uh, you know, carried up a mountain. Um, we we took a lot of that kind of ruggedness mm -hmm. and the, the self-sufficiency, everything in one kit, uh, but then we optimized it for the first responder, for the state and local uh, folks where, um, you know, we, we looked at things like a lot of sacrifices that we made for weight savings for somebody that may have uh, have to carry it up a, a, a mountainside somewhere really wasn't as important to the state and local first responders. Also, we looked at the procedure. Uh, we looked at the, the changes in the procedure between a relatively high risk environment um, where your, your risk may be greater than whatever the risk is posed by the chemical contamination. I mean, you have, you know, enemy activity. Um, but on the state and local side, hopefully we don't have that. Mm -hmm. We're very much focused on the contamination itself. So we've adapted the procedure, um, worked with a, a lot of partners with some of our local agencies, some very well-respected uh, hazmat teams to go through and validate, do the same validation that we had done with the special operations community we did that validation with the regular armed forces. Um, and then we've also done that validation with state and local hazmat teams <clears throat> to the point that it's, it has now since been deployed um, in several states as their standard decontamination. Some of the states that have state run decon or hazmat teams, um, it's their standard issue uh, decontamination line. It's their go-to um, unless there's some sort of, you know, really uh, outlandish type call. Um, that's their go-to decon for the bulk, bulk of their calls, the vast majority of their calls. Um, and, that, and that's what we're starting to see. And we're also continuing to like, receive that end-user feedback um, to see, hey, what, what if anything is missing? Maybe something is too much. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe this step of the procedure worked very well for our military users, but it's not working great for our state and local users. And we're continuing to adjust both our training 
um, our, proceed, our recommended procedures, and we're also uh, you know, constantly looking at the technology and the equipment that's in the kit and tweaking that as we go. Now, you, you talked about <clears throat> using some of the, the products that are inside of so tech doll, right, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. You know, do you have to use all of those products during every single call? Would it be specific call related? How, yeah. how, how do I decide that? How yeah, I absolutely. I mean, and, and we, we go deep into this. We have a, we have an app. We have the Decal Field Guide app, which I think everyone that should be watching this should be familiar right. with. Um, and that's going to tell you, okay, how, how do I decon? This is a certain substance. I think there's 120 some threats in that app, um, categories of threats as well. And it's going to tell you. Do I need to mix all three parts of Dolphin Decon or should I just use just the part A, the soap for removal? Um, temperature concerns, environmental concerns. Maybe you don't want to put any liquid on something. It may be water reactive. A lot of information is in the app and you would just do dry decon by itself. But then again, you know, some people will look and say, hey, we include things like, like uh, glow sticks, chem lights mm -hmm. in the kit. Now, obviously that's something, um, again, military may not have a light truck uh, able to, to come out there and, and put lots of lights on the scene. Um, but what we found is that some of our end users were using these for drones and for uh, unmanned ground vehicles and actually being able to mark um, with lights, with chem lights, is very helpful for the operators of those drones and other robots to be able to drive in to get decontaminated or to land, orient themselves in position. So we've, we've really put a lot of thought into a lot of the components of this kit. Um, so sometimes, you know, you may not know what it's for, but there's generally a reason if there's something's in that kit, there's a reason behind us. If you've got any questions, give us a call. We're more than happy to talk, talk you through. And, and, and the job guide that that's in the, in the EDS kit yep. walks through this. Okay. Yeah. So the job guide is, um, you know, heavy duty laminated step-by-step -step instructions. We've had some users where they, they have a designated person in their decon line who does nothing but stand there and read step-by-step step through through the uh, the job guide. Um, and it's that much, it is very much in detail, very step-by-step. Step. Uh, so someone with very little training uh, can can just read through that, do those steps, and accomplish decon very easily. Now, we talk about the EDS kit being this duffel bag. And I mean, can you, can you can put it inside of a hard case as well? I think we have that example. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we put it in a hard case. Um, we found it fits in pretty much standard issue rucksacks if it needs to be carried a long way. Um, and then, you know, it's if there's other little things that your team wants to keep in there, you know, it's customizable, right? Um, there's certain things that we can provide. There's certain things that might just be easier for the end user to provide. They can put whatever they need, basic PPE, all sorts of things can go in this. And again, very compact, very fast to deploy. It doesn't take up. Um, hardly any space compared to other kind of decon uh, equipment. In the process, I mean, we talk about a dry decon, we talk about you know, this wet decon mm -hmm. using like a formulation like Dahlgren. You know, combine those two together and making, I guess like you'd call it like hybrid decon. Hybrid right? decon, so hybrid, yes, decon. hybrid decon. And that's something that we promote heavily yep. at, at First Line through all of our decon products. Yep, absolutely. And so with hybrid decon, if, you know, how do I get more information? How do I, you know, I'm going to buy this EDS kit and it's a six person kit. And I'm like, okay, now what do I do? How do I get educated on this? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you open up your EDS kit and you see your EDS job guide, which should be sitting right there on top, you flip it over on the back and our website's right there. You can go to our website. Um, we have all sorts of information on our products, but there's also a training page. And that goes to what we call FLUA, First Line Utilization Academy. And we offer comprehensive training on hybrid decon, the EDS, any of our kits that we sell. Um, and we're also putting some of these classes on our online system, uh, Flight LMS, um, which is just an online learning management system. You know, stay tuned. There'll be a lot of, uh, you know, some of these classes don't, don't go directly over to an online format. They're very hands-on. Right. But a lot of the learning that we can put online, we'll be putting online. Now, one of, one of, the, one of the keys to the, this kit is like, I think we talked like where during the EP from the transition from the, from the EPDS system where you buy this kit, you open it all up, you've used it, you can't buy the yeah. replenishment parts to it. We've changed that with this. Yeah, so we've we've designed it so that everything is decodable within the kit. Um, obviously, with the exception of your consumables, mm -hmm. right? So your Dogger Decon, your FiberTech, your RSDL, your glow sticks, and the batteries for your headlamp. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. are pretty much the only thing that you're going to consume. Everything else can be uh, decommed, put back in service. Um, well, the trash bags as well. We provide plenty of trash bags uh, to, to bag up all of your waste, which is a very important part of decon. Um, so we, we do have uh, um, replenishment packs, as they're called, which instead of having to buy a whole other kit, um, is just the consumable portions of it. And the other nice thing is that we, we give you extra, you know, we call it a, a 6, 12, and 24, and that's to try to represent about the size of the team that this kit will process um, without needing replenishment. But there's a little bit extra in there, and most people find, after they've used it a few times, um, they use a lot less of FiberTech, of Dahlgren, after they figure out how to, how to use it, how much to apply. Um, so, I mean, we've had, in some, in some cases, we've put 30 people through a six-person kit, mm -hmm. um, no problems. So it really just depends on the threat environment, how you're using it, your proficiency with the kit. Um, but again, you don't have to trash the kit once you've used it once. And, and the EDS 6, 12, and 24, the EDS 6 comes in one bag. Yeah, so the 6 is one bag, and it has two, it's, it's built around shuffle pits. Um, and it's two shuffle pits, a clean pit and a dirty pit. Mm -hmm. And anyone that's familiar with this three-pool style decon will be familiar with the setup of an EDS. Um, and then the EDS 12 comes in two duffel bags, has more expendables, and it's designed for a three, a three pit setup. But instead of it being a, a let's say a, um, a hot pit, a warm pit, and a cold pit, uh, it's actually two what we call dirty pits and one clean pit. And we found this is the best way to optimize throughput okay. for larger teams. And then the 24 is essentially two six, six man um, kits. It's, it's set up in three duffel bags. Um, the duffel bags aren't quite as heavy as the, the one, uh, but it's designed to have two lines running side by side. So four total shuffle pits, two per decon line. And when people get these kits, they can kind of customize the use that they're looking to do with all these different bags. Yeah, absolutely. And I always tell people, you know, it, you're getting the kits, but um, it's, it's always nice to have extra. So extra fiber tech goes a long way. Uh, generally, you know, just get a roll of fiber tech or a case of fiber tech wipes. Um, it, it, it's, it's probably one of the most useful things in decon, especially if somebody comes out just dripping in whatever it might be. Um, just absorbing all that up in fire tech, throwing it in the bags, and then going through your regular decon line. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of sprayers are in the EDS kit? You know, we, we use like electrostatic sprayers, you plug in different types of sprayers, or the cordless sprayers. <clears throat> yep. So again, going back to its, its roots in the military, uh, keep it keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. So they're they're basically small pressure sprayers, like similar to your um, pump sprayer that everyone that's done decon operations is familiar with. It's a smaller version. It's a more ruggedized version. We talk, call them tactical sprayers. Um, they come in a little molly pouch that you can hook onto your toolkit. Um, so that's that's the basic sprayer. Sprayer is great. It's simple. It doesn't break. It gets the job done. Uh, however, if somebody wants to take an electrostatic sprayer and throw that in the kit, throw it with the kit, more power to them. Mm -hmm. It's great. It'll make the dog run go a lot further. Um, but you know everything in the kit is everything you need. You don't need an additional sprayer uh, in order to run these operations. And, and you know a lot of like a lot of end users are probably watching this right now are, are having a discussion of like, wow, EDS, okay, I got to change the way that I do decon. I got I got to now sell this mm -hmm. to to my chief or my command or whoever it might be. What what, what would be like a, a kind of an advantage? One key point that they could take back to to their you know. Cool. Well, I mean, the big thing that, that all everyone in fire administration likes is cost, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, if you compare this setup to any decontamination tent, car wash style decon, with all of the net, all of the pumps, hoses, uh, catch bladders, basins, and all of the extra stuff, a whole truck to haul it in, um, the cost of the EDS, especially over its 10-year shelf life, right. is, it, it's a huge cost savings. And the other thing is, again, just that the simplicity of the logistics of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's small, long shelf life. You can put it somewhere, hopefully pull it out for training, use it, um, replenish it. It's not, it's not a big maintenance chore like a lot of these tents are where every time you pull them out, another sprayer nozzle is broken or another hose is frayed. Right. And there, is there a training version? Yes, there is. There's a, um, 
a, a complete training version where all the expendables are inert training versions of FireTech, RSDL, and Dauber Decon. Awesome. So, you know, with that, th that's, uh, that's the, a kind of general overview of the EDS system, EDS kit that we've put together. And uh, we're going to have a lot more information available um, on our website. Uh, if, you got, if, if anybody wants to reach out to us, uh, you can email us at sales at firstlinetech.com. You can also call us directly, 703-955-7510. That phone number, you, you will always get somebody on the other line and who can answer your questions or direct you, navigate you to the appropriate person to get you the, the information you need. And uh, we're going to do a lot more of these Connect Max. In fact, we're thinking uh, in the next couple of months, we'll do another hybrid decon specific. Um, you mentioned something about Flua as Yeah, well. we, we want to get more into, I mean, you know the products, we like sharing the products, but we want to get a lot into the science. We talk about yeah. the science behind decon, the science behind the way our kits are. So that's one of the directions we want to go with some of these Connect Nexus. Getting some of these, these experts, these subject matter experts right. in the field of hazmat and decon and getting them on there to tell you uh, you know, why this method of blotting versus wiping is better, why Dolphin Decon works on certain substances um, better than anything else that's out there. So we're going to have a, a great next number, couple next month, couple months of Connect Nexus that are coming out throughout. And if you have any feedback on a specific topic that you wanted us to maybe cover again that you've seen in the past during a IFC Hazmat Conference or CBR Convergence Conference, you know, we're looking for ideas to what, what's going to be better to, you know, enhance your job um, through some of the information that we can push out to you guys. So we're looking at getting feedback from you guys on the Connect Nexus that we're putting out there. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please, you know, shoot, us, shoot it over our way. And then we look forward to the next Connect Nexus with you guys coming up soon. So anything else for you? Or no. Yeah. So see you guys soon and uh, hopefully in person over the next couple of months, maybe. We'll see, we'll see how this all goes with the vaccine and COVID. So uh, thank you and talk to you soon.